Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. All right, so we've made it to episode 20 of the It Is Top podcast, and we are in the 8th of Teves, and today we begin chapter 7. So if you listened to the podcast yesterday, and if not, you should go listen to it, and um, we started talking about how if you start to become familiar with these terms, remember I mentioned that these terms are going to come up over and over and over again, so um, we started to learn what the term klipos mean. Klipos are, are these shells that God uses to conceal his godliness in the world because everything essentially is godliness but god created a mechanism by which his godliness will be concealed within the world so we mentioned last time that there are two different types of these shells and last time we we really give gave a definition to one of the types of these shells which is namely the three impure klipos which totally and utterly conceal godliness and are the source of all kinds of impure things in the world, whether it's idolaters, whether it's the power that a person gets through sinning, whether it's animals that are unkosher to eat, all these things come from these three klipas. Today, we're going to talk about the other category of klipa, which is just one klipa. So it's the fourth klipa. And that's what's known as klipas noga. Noga literally means luminosity. So the way that I like to think about this is that if you you want to think about the first three klipos as being totally, totally o- opaque. So they 100% can conceal godliness. The klipas noga is a little bit more translucent. So it's still klipa. It still con- conceals God, but it's a little bit more translucent in the sense that it is possible to reveal God in the way that, that it that it is manifest. So it's, and what we'll see in learning today's portion is it actually serves as an intermediary between the good side and the bad side. And it can kind of go either way. So if you looked at the title of today's podcast, I called it the power of intention because this is where intention comes in. So this is the category that's really, really interesting in Hasidus and in life, really. And it's where the power of really agency comes in. Because, you know, there are some things that we can all agree are just 100% bad, you know, murder, (laughs) stealing, um, being angry at somebody for no reason, you know, things like that. that. That's like everybody would agree, okay, that's not a good thing to do. Then there are other things that most people would agree is, you know, very good to do. It's you know, giving charity, uh, praying to God, you know, doing holy things, that kind of stuff. That's like very obviously holy. Then there's this whole other middle ground that's like a gray area. And this is where the Klipas Noga falls in. So this is where we're, where, uh, how we're going to try to understand it. So we start, he starts off the chapter today and we actually had mentioned this earlier in previous episodes. So it's a little bit of a recap where he says that what is one of the things that this Klipa, this Klipas Noga creates that it's this is the source for is the second soul of the Jew, the animal soul of the Jew. So if you remember, we talked about how the Jew has two souls, not just one. There's a godly soul and an animal soul. So so the animal soul of a Jew that is vested within the blood of the person is comes from this Klipas Noga. So it comes from this thing that we're calling Klipas Noga, as well as what else comes from there are all the animals and the fish and the fowl that Jews are allowed to eat. They also come from Klipas Noga. So too do all things that come from the vegetative and the inanimate world that we're allowed to eat 
and use. These also come from the Klipas Noga. And so too, going back to, remember, uh, if you remember the garments that we talked about, the garments of thought, speech, and action, that we said the godly soul has these garments. So too, does the animal soul have these garments? So these garments can be used for bad things, but they can also be used for neutral things. So when we go about our business, when we, you know, just think about daily things, what we have to do every day, what what we did yesterday, you know, when we talk about just random stuff, when we do random things that are not forbidden, you know, they're just neutral. We're just going about our day. These things at this time, at this moment, when we engage with these three garments in this neutral way, it's coming from the the Klipas Noga. And the altar rabbi here makes a distinction and he says, you know, it's neutral things that we do that are not for the sake of God. So that encompasses a lot of things that we might do in our lives, that it's things that we do just for our physical bodies and in order to satisfy our desires. And even if it's something that is necessary, it doesn't necessarily, we're not really necessarily talking about like indulging in something and overeating the donuts on Hanukkah or something like that. It's just things like, you know, brushing your teeth in the morning, um, eating healthy food in order to sustain your body. Um, getting a good night's sleep, all these things that are actually just, you know, sustaining the body and keeping it alive come from the Klipas Noga because we're not doing it for the sake of God. We're doing it in order to sustain and and give to our body. And so he talks about how the altar of it mentions here, how we were talking about last time, you know, that we said that our world, this physical world that we're in, which we call the world of Asiya, this is the world of action. It's the lowest of all four worlds in the order of creation and it is full of bad we talked about how it's really you know evil prevails in this world however there's a little bit of good that is inside of this world and that little bit of good is manifest through the klipas noga because the klipas noga also is a klipa like we said like the three impure klipas but unlike the other three klipas it's not entirely evil there is a glimmer of good and this is how it could be that we talked about in one of the earlier episodes how it could be that this klipas noga, this this animal soul of a Jew, actually allows Jewish people to do good things. So when a Jewish person has a feeling to naturally give to somebody, and that's their nature, naturally be kind, naturally be compassionate, that's all coming from a Jewish person's animal soul. So it's not actually that bad. That's the glimmer of good that's inside of the the animal soul. And so now he mentions what I mentioned in the beginning, that this klipas noga is the intermediary between the three totally impure klipos and the side of holiness. And so that's why what it's able to do is it goes back, it can go either way. It can kind of, it's like, sort of like on a tightrope between both places. So it can either totally descend and be encompassed in the, the impure klipos, or it can become totally encompassed and engrossed within holiness. And the way that this happens, that it would become totally holy, is that the good that's found within this Klipas Noga, like we mentioned that there's a little bit of good within it, it becomes refined and rectified and it rises up and rises back into the holiness. So now the Altar Rebbe gives a few examples of how this could take place. Like what are we talking about here where the um, the good within the Klipas Noga gets refined and elevated in this way? So for example, it could be, let's say somebody is eating really, really good meat and re- and having really good wine, like really rich meat and really rich wine. But why are they doing this? They're doing this in order, to, in order to expand their mind so that they have a good mind to understand Hashem, understand God, and understand His Torah. And we find an example of this in the Gemara in Yoma, Masachat Yoma 76b, where the great sage Rava said that Wine and fragrance make my mind more receptive. So you might have had this experience before. You know, let's say you're trying to study something and it's really hard for you to study. I know I have this experience sometimes. I forget to eat. And all of a sudden I'm really having trouble, you know, focusing on something. And I think, oh my gosh, you know what? I I actually forgot to eat. And then if you eat some good meat, you know, and even sometimes some good wine, and it really just grounds you and it really gives you that ability to think clearly. So if you use wine and meat in this way, this is an example of using the Klipas Noga because the purpose of why you're using these things is in order to 
learn Torah. So that is actually going to elevate them back to the holiness. Another example would be for uh, in order to keep the mitzvah of having pleasure for Shabbos and Yom Tov. It's called the Onig Shabbos and Yom Tov. So there's a big mitzvah. If you look at all the Jewish holidays, including Shabbos, what do they all have in common? Maybe with the exception of Yom Kippur is it's all about eating, right? Even Yom Kippur actually is about eating because we eat so much the day before Yom Kippur too. So if somebody is using the foods and really good foods in order to beautify and to derive pleasure on Shabbos and Yom Tov, this is, again, a very holy way to use these physical foods. So then this, once again, the meat and the wine that comes from this klipas noga, so it's coming from this neutral kind of like husk thing, it actually becomes elevated into holiness. And then another example that he gives is somebody who tells a joke why? In order to expand their mind and to gladden their heart to serve God better. So let's say if somebody's, you know, kind of down and out, and you'll see this a lot with a lot of rabbis who give lectures, they often will open their speech with a joke, if you've ever noticed that. And so why? What's the purpose of that? When often when you open with a joke, or even for yourself, when you kind of, you know, get into a lighter mood, you might be able to be a little bit more happy and more receptive to whatever it is that you're learning. And again, here, the altar of cites the Gemara, where he talks about the sage Rabbah, who would always start with a joke. Whenever he would teach his students, he would always start with a joke. So that's the conclusion of today's Tanya. It's in the middle of chapter seven. We're going to keep going with chapter seven for the next um, couple of classes, actually. And so just to recap, we started talking about the second category of klipos, the klipos noga. And unlike the first category of the three klipos, the three impure klipos, which are totally impure, and I like to think of as being like totally opaque, the klipos noga is a little bit more translucent. translucent. So it still does conceal God, but it has the potential to express God. So it can go either way. You can It can go down or it can go up. And this klipa is the source of the animal soul of a Jew specifically, so not the soul of idolaters, but the animal soul of a Jew. It's also the source of all animals, vegetative and inanimate objects that are neutral, that we're allowed to use. You know, it's not things that we have to use. It's not things that are uh, materials for mitzvahs per se, but it's objects that are more neutral and that we have the choice and we have the ability. These are things that God gave us the ability to use our intention. And depending on what, how we use them, we have the ability to either bring them down with us or we can elevate them into holiness. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope that made things a little bit more more easy to understand and we'll I'll speak to you again thanks for listening to the it is top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer this podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather Abraham Yitzhak Ben Binyamin Cohen of blessed memory music by Shoshana if you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube Apple iTunes Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to leave us a five-star review to find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.